one of you right now, just lift your hands up and just begin to thank God for life. Just begin to thank God for one more day. Just begin to thank God because he's brought us all a mighty, mighty long way. Somebody say thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. And I want to give honor to God who is the exalted ruler in my life. To this preacher, this pastor, Pastor Longcry, a visionary in his own right. And when I looked at the mission statement on the program, the bulletin today, it took me back to Jesus' mission, uh, mission statement in Luke, the fourth chapter, verses 18 through 19. Luke 4, 18 through 19. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for help and strength. We thank you for one more day. We thank you for this golden opportunity. Lord, anoint us right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Thank God for all of these preachers. Thank God for my loving wife. Somebody say amen. 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 And I want to say thank God for every one of you who are in this place right now. Those of you that have your Bibles, turn with me now to the book of Acts of the Apostles, the 19th chapter. Acts of the Apostles, Luke is writing here, but God is the author. The book of Acts deals not only with the birth of the church, but it also talks about ministry in general. Matter of fact, in the book of Acts, the way was used to denote Christianity. So when you talk about Christians, it came through the terminology or the phraseology of the word for way. Amen. Luke 19, verses 23 through 27. Luke 19, 23 through 27. Well, preacher, why do you say it so many times? Listen, sometimes repetition is good until learning takes place. Repetition is good until learning takes place. When you were in school, you learned your ABCs over and over and over again until they got into your mind. In other words, you can wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning and recite your ABCs. Think about it. Amen. Luke, Acts 19, uh, verse 23. Acts 19, verse 23. Luke's right. And about that time, there arose a great commotion about the way, Christianity. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. In other words, they made a lot of money. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul, this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are not gods, G-O-D-S, small g, which are made with hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. You may be seated. Amen. And I want to talk with you from the thought or from the theme, conflict resolution. I want to talk about Conflict resolution. What do you mean by conflict? Number one, discord. Disagreements. Dissension. Opposition. Difference of opinion. Being at odds with one another. That's what conflict is. But the word resolution, inside of it, there's another term which is called to resolve. In other words, to make amends, to straighten out situations, and to bring spiritual harmony and unity 
amongst the believers in God's house. So we're talking about conflict resolution. Let me now look at this city called Ephesus, a city which was a seaport city in Ionia, a seaport city in Ionia, located in the middle of the western coast of Asia. Now, Paul founded the church at Ephesus. Matter of fact, he had stayed there for a three-year period. He founded the church on his third missionary journey. But not only did he find the church, he was the founder of that church, but inside of the city of Ephesus, there was this huge temple called the Temple of Diana. It sat back then. We talk about mega churches, ain't nothing new in the world, another the day. Back then it had to see 25,000 people, this temple of Diana. But they were not spiritual. They were really cultic in the sense that inside of that church there was cultic prostitution going on in the church. Whatever you wanted, you could find in the temple of Diana. But not only that, but there were silversmiths. And this particular one, by the name of Demetrius, they would all get together and they would make little images of Diana. And they would sell these images. Matter of fact, that business was so lucrative, not only did Demetrius and his boys make these little idols, but there were other people in other different cities making the same idols and coming into Ephesus and selling all of these things. But somebody said that was back then. Yeah, but even now we do the same thing. Because some of us will look at our cars and make that an idol. Some of us will look at our intelligence and think that we're so wonderful and got it going on, we think that we're an idol. But let me tell you something. We are not, uh, we are not independent. We're very much dependent. We are not independent. Look to your neighbor and say, you're not independent. Yeah. And, and I'm saying that because you've got to realize if you didn't wake up this morning, you wouldn't come to the sanctuary. You've got to realize that you're breathing right now. And you have the activity and the mobility of your limbs. Not only that, but your heart is moving. So, so you, you're moving, but it's not because of you. So that lets you know that no man and no woman is an island all by themselves. Amen. So we need one another. Idol worship is a terrible thing. And somebody said it was going on back then, but let me tell you right now, in 2014, some of us still got some idols that we need to destroy. Let's go now to the book of Exodus, and we're coming right back. Let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 20. Exodus, Old Testament. Exodus, chapter 20. Amen. Praise Jesus. Verses 5 through 6. I didn't say this. The word said it. Somebody say amen. amen. Actually, yeah, but let me, you know, I'm starting at the first verse. Yeah. Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 through 5. When you haven't seen amen. amen. Now, these are not my instructions. These are God's instructions. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods, G-O-D, small g, before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I am the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me, of those who make idols, and of those who scandalize my name. I'm talking about conflict resolution. 
Isn't it amazing how on Sunday morning we all come to church and we grin and we smile, but then some of us, we don't like one another. Sometimes we sing in the same choir. Sometimes we're deacons on the same deacon board. And we grin and we become gospel entertainers on Sunday morning, so we really hate one another. And, and God told me to tell you this morning. Conflict resolution is needed in your life. Because whatever problem you got, if you don't deal with the problem, the problem will deal with you. And what happens in problematic situations, those problems manifest themselves. And they balloon themselves. And they get higher and deeper. And if you don't watch out, they will mess with you. Now, what was the cause of this conflict? Number one, demons stirring human agents to oppose the gospel of Jesus Christ. Demons <laughs> stirring human agents to oppose the gospel of Christ. Let's look at verse 24 and 25. Somebody say amen. amen. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Diana and brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the working of similar occupations and said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. In other words, Paul and them coming around here talking about Jesus this and Jesus that and folk are not buying these idols anymore. They're leaving the temple and they're following what Paul is representing, Jesus Christ. We got a bad problem here. So Demetrius was being used by the devil. And that's why we say here, demons stirring human agents to oppose the gospel of Jesus Christ. I wonder and if the truth be told, have you ever let the enemy use you in God's house? Have you ever been spiritually demon-possessed and you act out of character and said some things in God's house that you had no business saying and did some things with some folk in God's house that you had no business doing? I'm talking about conflict resolution. We've got to straighten some things out. Listen, you've got to be honest with God. Because, listen, if you want to renew your mind, you've got to understand what conflict resolution is all about. And conflict resolution is about healing yourself through the processes of honesty. First of all, honesty between you and God. That's why I'm saying that we're not independent like we think we are. Because sometimes we go to these schools and get a little education. Sometimes we go to these schools and get a little spaghetti behind our names. And we think that we got it going on. And we think that we're so wonderful. And you really ain't praying the way you need to pray. You really don't focus on God the way you really need to focus on God. Conflict resolution is needed in all our lives. So what was the cause of this conflict? Not only demons stirring human agents to oppose gospel of Jesus Christ, but the making of silver statues of the goddess of Diana, household idols, and they made big money hustling stuff. Made big money doing this kind of stuff. But the temple of Diana came about through loose sex and all kinds of sexual perversions going on in the temple of Diana. But what about in 2014? Listen, we don't want to talk about it because we keep it hush. They don't need to know it. That's just between me and you know. But let me tell you something. They might not know that, but God and listen, I ain't trying to take nobody on a guilt trip. I'm just doing what God told me to do. And said that we need to bring about conflict resolution. It starts individually first. And then it spreads and goes collectively. In other words, I need to work on how. I need to get how right now. I need to be honest with God and how. In other words, I need to see God and say, God, I need your help. I need your power. And yeah, how it's saved and I'm sanctified. I'm Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. But there's some stuff in Howard that Howard needs to work on. I ain't talking about you, but I know you're all right. I'm talking about me. 
making money for years, but because of this preacher by the name of Paul and his colleagues, they're changing things around. And if we don't deal with them, we can't make any more money. Now that's in the temple of Diana. But in 2014, we're making money for food. And we ain't got no business making money. We're doing stuff that we ain't got no business doing. Slick stuff. And I gotta rise above my handicaps and my disabilities 
So Paul and the brethren were going through, and then all of a sudden, the clerk of the city brought them together. And they were all in, 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 that, in this big temple. And, and Paul wanted to go in, but they said, Paul, no, no, walk in there. You, you can't walk in there because they'll hurt you. Because they're mad with you anyway. So anyway, God used the magistrate or the man, and he brought everybody together and said, listen, these men have done nothing wrong. All they've done was preach the good news. All they've done was share the goodness of the Lord. And if you don't have anything on them, let them go. Or go get your lawyer and take them to court. But they had nothing on you. So conflict resolution came about. And all I'm saying today to every one of us, we've got to wake up and become better believers than we've been. Because you know why? Somebody's watching you. Some child, some young man, some young lady is observing you. And you don't want to fail them because God is using you as an instrument to help get them delivered. God is using you as a tool to bring about spiritual growth and spiritual power inside of their lives. So don't mess up, not only for you, but don't mess up for them. And God does not have to use any of us. Because he got some folk out there that ain't been to nobody's church. That walks around with their britches down. Walks around crazy and shot out and hustling folk. And you know something? God says, I'm going to take them off the street. I'm going to get them healed. I'm going to get them delivered. Because it's the folk I got. Don't want to work for me. I'll bring them in to take their place. You don't want nobody to take your place. You don't want to keep on doing what you're doing. So it involves conflict resolution. I've got to work on me. I've got to start getting me right. Listen, I ain't got no time to be critical of nobody else. Because I've got my own garbage. I've got my own fault. I've got my own peculiar, not so nice ways. I've got to work on me. So I've got six months to mind my business and six months to leave yours alone. If you want to do all of that, it requires humility. It requires humbleness. And Jesus was humble. Conflict resolution starts with you. Then once you get yourself then you can help somebody. Even if the train knows how to end, 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 end. And that's what we got to learn how to do. Say, end, Lord, I'm sorry. End, I'm sorry, Lord. End. So if the train can go its home, we got to blow our home and say, Lord, fix me. Lord, make a way for me. Nobody wins an argument. 
And arguation is nothing but transference of spirits from one person to another. And if you don't cast out those spirits, those spirits will do a number on you and begin to multiply. And as they begin to multiply, they'll cause you to say some things, they'll cause you to do some things, they'll cause you to act some ways that you don't want. Conflict resolution. It begins with each of us individually. And then we need to ask the question, Lord, what is my assignment? What assignment do you have for my life? Yeah, I'm a certain age now, and I've been around the court, and I've been through a lot of things, but Lord, what is my assignment? What is my job? What is my responsibility? And the more you seek him, the better off you'll be. Listen, if every member of Exodus was like you, what would this church be? Don't say nothing. I didn't say that. You said <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. Not only hell but new hope. Listen, I got haters in my church. Some folks don't like me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they grinning. Oh, Pastor, you so wonderful. Yeah, let me get sick. Let me get sick and see what they do for me. You know, I got, I got two sons. They said, Pastor, them sons, you got it real good. Why don't you go sit on down now and, and let them do what they needed to do? I said, you got to be out of your mind. <laughs> I said, what you see looks good, but you don't know what's behind what you see. Not only is it in my wife through the auspices of God brought them into being, but we know what's behind what you don't see. <laughs> and, and, and some of them, they switch this anyhow. All they want to do is get rid of me because they know I ain't going for their jump. I ain't going for the yang yang. So, so they get them to try to control I know I Something to think about. Something to think about. Hey, let me tell you something. Folks hug you, but they're not going and, and what I'm talking about, I'm almost finished, but in conflict resolution, we've got to get to the point that we've got to get more discipline in our flesh. We've got to bring our flesh in proper alignment with our spirit so that our task in church can be easier. And then not only that, but folk will see that we're really genuine in what we're doing. And the devil is mad with every one of us. Why is the devil mad with every one of us? Because we made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. And whatever way the devil can hinder our growth, whatever way the devil can hinder our maturity, whatever way the devil can hinder our sanctification, that's what he'll do. Not only that, but he'll use your grandchildren to mess you up. He'll use your family to mess you up. He'll use your handicaps and your weaknesses to keep you in bondage. But God sent me back to let you know that the devil is a liar. It was greater than he and to me than he that is in the world. Devil, take your hands off of me. And we're going to deal with conflict resolution. We're going to deal with conflict resolution. We got to start talking life to ourselves. We got to start getting healed. And we gotta start realizing that every step we make, every day, we've got to be ordered. Those steps should be ordered by the Lord. Don't go over to the left with saying, Lord, did you tell me to go over there? Or did I just want to go over there? Because sometimes you go over to the left and you see some things you ain't got no business seeing. Sometimes you go over to the right and, and you go and don't ask God permission. And you get over there and then you start doing some things that you ain't got no business doing. So you need to seek God in every move. You need to seek God in every thought. I don't know about you, but imagination can be very crippling. Imagination can be very crippling. And if you don't know the discipline of throwing down those things in your head that are not of God, those things will impact you. And before you know it, those things will become contagious inside of you. And although you're saved and know the Lord, but if you don't watch out, even being saved, you'll start doing some things. And going some places. And acting some things out.
And, and we got to get that thing together. And, and, and before we can do anything, it requires conflict resolution. We've got to get ourselves together. In other words, listen, years ago, I used to have a problem. And, and my problem was that I would do slick stuff and thought I was getting away. And an old man came by and said, Reverend, I was, I was going to preach it at this limit and say, you know, you, I know what you did, and, and nobody saw you, but I saw you. Well, how do you know? He said, listen, I got wisdom. I've been around, and the mistakes you made, I made years ago. He said, I saw what you did. And I said, wow, me. I didn't tell him nothing. He just looked at me, and he said, I saw what you did. And he said, God told me to tell you, don't do that ever again. I thought I was slick, though, but I got caught. I got caught in my mess. And the man of God came to me. I'm looking around. I said, don't nobody see me. Don't nobody know what I'm doing. Listen, I'm caught. Pick a boo. God sees you. <laughs> and it made me realize that God has eyes everywhere. Now, what will it take? For you to start bringing resolution into your life. And let me tell you why you need to get some stuff straight. Because God has assignments for every one of you. If some of you could see the blessings down the line that God has for you. Some of the slick stuff you've been doing, you would stop doing. Some of the slick stuff and places you've been going, you would just stop. Somebody say, well, Reverend ain't around. Reverend, he, but listen, he know. He know. Ain't nothing new under the sun, y'all. Some of us think we come in here with, with new tricks and new habits that nobody else seen you for. Let me tell you something. Ain't nothing you done new under, ain't nothing new under the sun, y'all. Nothing. I was in South Africa, in Johannesburg. I was preaching in the Methodist church. They ain't had no organ. They ain't had no music. And all of a sudden, people 80 years and 90 years old got up in the church, right? And they had a line dance. And listen, I'm old folk. They were they singing Jesus and clapping their hands. And they all coming down the line, just like a soul train thing. And I said to myself, I thought this thing came from soul train. And the old man said, no, we've been doing this for years. He said, so he said the folk in America just took it and commercialized it. In Africa. Listen, in that Sunday morning, we raised $60. And I'm telling y'all, the people shouted for two hours. $60, y'all. Not $600, $60. $60. And I'm telling y'all. Oh! 
together. It's no more business as usual. It's over. Look to your neighbor and say, it's over. It's over. Now turn around and somebody you don't know, tell them it's over. It's over. And listen, you ain't got to tell them it's over. They know what needs to be over. Let us tell them. They know. Conflict. Resolution. It starts in the visual first. I was listening to this choir, and this is a good choir. A real good choir. But the more they pray, the more they work out their own little problems, the more God will use them in a better, bigger way than ever before. Well, preacher, how do you know about all that kind of stuff? Well, let me tell you. I've been in the singing business for 46 years. We're all over the world saying gospel music, albums, and stuff like that, which don't mean nothing. But nevertheless, to God be the glory. But I know this much, that when you work together and pray, God will make ways like never before. This little lady was up here, she had this fan. And I saw it, she didn't think I saw it. But the fan dropped. And sometimes we gotta drop some things. But when we pick them up, this time pick them up, and when you pick them up, it's not like it's going to be before. You want to sanctify it, amen. You want to give it as given it unto the Lord. And there's some things we need to pick up which are spiritual, and we need to sanctify those things, and we need to give them to the Lord. We need to pick up some things that are sanctified, that we might do a greater work for God. I listened to this choir, and, 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 and pastor, the Lord just showed me. I was sitting there, and, and I heard them sing, and, and, and the Lord just said, not only in Hickory, but they need to be heard all over this country. And then, while I'm sitting there, and, and, you know, you can do what you want with it, but I, I saw an album cover with this choir, and then I saw a little small portion of it with the pastor's picture on it. And, 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 and it's not, 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 not homemade stuff, I mean good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Yeah. None of that hit and miss stuff that you do, that homemade stuff, none of that, none of that. I'm talking about stuff that will go over this country. Because there's ministry in there. And then God has gifted this young man, anointed him like never before. And, and, and the more he deals with conflict resolution, the more he'll bless them. Because what's really happening is that this choir is singing, but the anointing of God comes from this man. But then his anointing comes from the teach, the tutelage, and the pastor of this church. And it goes abroad. And then as you sing, other folk will be invested with what you've been through. There's stories up here. There's miracles up here. There's people up here that loves the Lord. And the world needs to hear. But then once it happens, you've got to stay humble. You've got to stay submissive. And you can't get puffed up. And you can't get cocky. Pastor Long Cry put a book out. Folk that he don't even know reading that book. But he's still humble. He ain't cocky. And he ain't smelling himself. And, and God will do even greater things. It ain't over yet, Pastor. It ain't over yet. And God told me to tell everyone of you, it ain't over yet. All he wants is resolution inside of you. That great preacher's all in this room. All in this room, men of God that have much more experience than I've ever had. Been through some storms and been through some battles. God's going to use them too. And listen, there's a, I mean, I'm almost finished, I'm almost finished. There's a group of people that won't come to this church because of fear. But, but let me tell you something. The more you are in the community and love for it, that will draw them right up in the You ain't got to tell me. I can tell you. I can tell you. There's a group of folk that need to be here to see this. There's a group of folk that need to be in this church every Sunday that don't come. But God says the more you bring about conflict resolution in your own life and then transfer love in the community, they're going to come. They're going to come and, and listen, they're going to be surprised like they've never been surprised in their life. They're going to come and don't want to leave after they come. I know what I'm talking about. But it takes us getting right first. And then we'll bring the masses in. And listen, get away from this black as usual. 
they're going to be some Spanish and some Indian folk and some Cuban folk. Now yeah, get away from this black church stuff. It ain't no black church no more. It's God's church. Yeah, you, ain't, you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't got to go to Africa to do mission work. But Africans are right here in history. Missions are right here. So once we bring about conflict resolution in all of our lives, and listen, when you get weak sometimes, learn to cry out to God. And listen, a good run is better than a bad stand. David, he stood and got messed up. He could have ran, but he didn't. So I'm telling you, if you got to run, run! And listen, if you got to holler help, holler help! Don't do it! Look at that and say, don't do it! Look at somebody and say, don't do it! Conflict resolution starts with us. At this time, I'm going to open the doors of the church. Let there be one today we want you to come. Is there one? Is there one? Doors of this church are open. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? If there be one that stands in the need of prayer, come on down because prayer changes things. Conflict resolution. I've got some 